Ladies and gents, welcome back to another video and the clock is about to strike 1 a.m. Another late night for CryptoKid. Um, it's been pretty crazy, actually. I went to this incredible football award ceremony and I was like two meters within the range of Ronaldo. And for, for those of you that know football, you know it. Uh, you can check out my Instagram at CryptoKid to find out what happened. But it was really, really crazy. And speaking of really, really crazy, Bitcoin has pretty much been exactly doing what we discussed yesterday. Uh, we bounced off perfectly from the orange box of support. Um, and now we're trading within the $42,000 region. But in today's video, you're going to be finding out what I think may happen to Bitcoin in the upcoming hours, days and weeks. Because yes, the four hourly time frame may not look too bad. However, the weekly and two weekly do look a bit concerning. And what's also concerning is that GPTC is offloading more and more Bitcoin. And if we look at the top 10 known Bitcoin holders in the world, we know that Grayscale is number two right below Satoshi Nakamoto. So if more GPTC holders redeem their GPTC shares, this would mean that we may see more selling pressure from their side. And that's not going to impact the market um, very nicely at all. So for all of that and much, much more, make sure to stick around until the end of today's video. Uh, subscribe, leave a like and turn on the notification bell to not miss out on any future updates and if you are looking for a place to be trading bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies you can head over to today's description and use this link to try out bitflex to get up to eighty-eight thousand eight hundred and eighty-eight dollars worth in prizes and bonuses but going into the bitcoin ta let's start off with the shorter term time frame and then we'll move on to the macro so bitcoin came down to this line or this range of support if i should say and we saw a bounce i was mentioning that it's possible that bitcoin consolidates or sees a uh, push towards the upside and we chose to see a push back up but as you can see bitcoin tested the support of this previous bearish pennant which we broke down from um, and we, this week tested it and we're seeing a correction or a small mini correction on the one hourly time frames if i zoom in a little bit more and that's not a good sign it's not a good sign because it's indicating uh, weakness and this pump may not sustain much longer uh, even if it does, it's not going to go too much higher from, from my personal TA standpoint. Of course, nothing in this video is financial advice whatsoever, just my personal TA and opinions only. Always make sure to do your own research before trading or investing. Super important to come to your own conclusions. Um, it, it makes you develop as a trader. But of course, it's super important to also uh, look into what other um, you know, seasoned traders or technical analysts are looking in the markets and then take their ideas and insights and then smash them in and uh, use your own TA to decide uh, if you want to long, short or etc. But going into the weekly time frame, the reason why I don't think this pump may sustain too much further in the short term is that Bitcoin had a massive shooting star candle in the two week and weekly timeframes, indicating a huge, um, a huge exhaustion in buyers. We're having a three and seven period moving average crossover, but we got into that in way, way, way more detail in the previous video. So I'll put a card at the top right hand section. Check it out. It talks about the Consensio trading system that has been super, super accurate predicting the tops and bottoms for Bitcoin uh, in the past cycles. And uh, if you watch that, you can learn it. So definitely go ahead and check it out. And what's more concerning is that We've been talking about this in the previous weeks for Bitcoin. Apologies, I am. I feel like I'm getting sick, so that's why my throat is starting to get a little sore. So apologies if um, if my voice is not the best today. But in the top of the 2017, 2018 bull market, we 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 had it following the CME, CME Bitcoin futures launch. That was the first ever financial instrument which enabled Bitcoin uh, institutional investors to get exposure into Bitcoin. And following up to it, we rised by 220% and then, of course, dumped back down to $3,000 from $20,000. And we can see here that on this month's candle, so far, it's a local top with a spot ETF launch, again, giving a lot more exposure to institutional investors. And what we can see here, that it's a shooting star candle. Now, ending off this month, we may confirm the shooting star candle. And going into February, we may see Bitcoin drop between the 31 and 38K region. And between that region, I am consistent, consistently buying Bitcoin, 31K, 34K, 34K is like my dead on, I, that's like, that would be the perfect level. The 30 period moving average is lining up to that point. We have the MRI support lining up to it and we have 5 billion in liquidity too. So 34K would just be awesome. And um, if we drop to that level, coming up to the uh, final months to the halving, I think Bitcoin may start seeing uh, the continuation to its parabolic uptrend. But um, let's jump into the breaking news because that pretty much covers my take on Bitcoin. We can see here that Grayscale has been dumping astronomical amounts and they're the second 
known uh, top Bitcoin holders in the world. And if the sellers of GPTC continue to rise, because 1.5% fees for a Bitcoin ETF is huge. It's the highest number in the uh, only nine ETFs. And that's why people are selling. And uh, they are. it appears that they are recy recycling into the other spot ETFs like IBIT and FBTC. And this data is reflected by how much Bitcoin they're also accumulating. We can see the total assets in the, um, yeah, we can see that 20, there's 26 billion, uh, in, including GBTC, but excluding its 3 billion. They are kind of picking up, right? They're also trying to accumulate. But the GBTC outflows we can see on day five is now in a net negative. And that's not a good sign whatsoever. The only thing saving us is that this data from iShares Fidelity is delayed by two days because the traditional system is somehow it's still reliant on T plus two, meaning that uh, all the transactions will basically be registered after two days. Uh, however, on GPTC side, uh, because it's on chain data, it's pretty much instant. And uh, that's the clash that we have between the two different data sets between crypto uh, and um, and TradeFi at the moment. So that's that's why we can't give like a full definitive answer of how much uh, how much BlackRock and the other guys are accumulating. Maybe they bought a lot more, like five hundred million dollars today. And if that's the case, well, of course, then the outflow is in positive instead of the negative. But given what we have right now, it shows uh, not a great sum. And that's why I am getting a little bit concerned. Uh, but to all of those that are concerned about the ETFs, including me at this point in time, uh, James Safart posted this tweet for us. So he says that here's a chart for the asset growth for the most successful new ETF category of recent years, according to him. Uh, buffer ETF assets under management, aka defined outcome ETF assets. And for those thinking that the Bitcoin ETF launches were a flop, which I don't think, but um, you know, I, I'm not used to ETFs. I'm not I'm not from a trade five background, and a lot of us aren't. And that's why uh, these two guys, you know, Eric and James, they've been kind of guiding us through, and that's how they rose to fame. Uh, and what James is saying now is to relax because give it time. Healthy ETF growth looks like this. And you know what? I agree with it because people overestimate what can be done in the short term and underestimate what can be achieved in the macro. And uh, it's just going to take time for the ETFs to continue getting traction. And uh, the total assets that IBIT or you know, BlackRock, whatever you want to call it, Fidelity, the assets they hold will keep growing as demand for Bitcoin increases. After the halving, um, wh what's going to happen is that, that, that the daily amount of Bitcoin available on the market, which is currently 900 Bitcoins, that's going to fall to 450. And with the new institutional demand, with the already existing demand that we're having, people coming back into crypto, the social risk reducing, the supply is just not going to be enough. And based off of fundamental economics, if supply drops, demand increases, well, the, then price goes up too. What's also more bullish is that Bitcoin, according to this article by The Block, we have surpassed silver uh, silver ETFs with assets under management. So we are, are in third place, uh, just beyond, just basically almost behind gold with um, assets under management for ETFs. Now, I was going to share a tweet, but I think I lost it. And what that was showing is the total amount of uh, ETFs reaching 1 billion under assets under management within how many days that, have, that they've reached it. Beto is number one. Beto is the pro share strategy ETF. And that reached it in two days, 1 billion. Then it was GLD. Then it was something else. And then four and five were IBIT and FBTC. And these are all incredibly bullish factors. I mean, we're trading in terms of volume. We're killing it. We're, we're amongst the, the QQQ and uh, the VU which they both are traditionally one of th two of the most traded uh, ETFs in the world. And um, us meeting their volume is is pretty mind blowing. And people are just skipping this, right? We shouldn't skip these facts. And uh, Bitcoin in the macro is going to be super nice, even though if we do have some sort of a correction towards the 34K level, well, well then so be it. It's just going to give us an opportunity to be buying Bitcoin at cheaper levels before the halving. Now, to end off with two different things. Firstly, Jim Cramer, he said that nasty uh, beginning to the, to the nasty beginning to the Bitcoin sell off. Someone's probably going to try to make a stand here. But as we said last night, you can't have an asset double in value by hundreds of billions of dollars in anticipation of an ETF. And then almost no one shows up. Look, I don't want to give this guy credit, but, you know, ETF launches are just majorly based on speculation. Um, if the price continues, if the price rises based off of the news, it's, it is speculation. It's not necessarily it, it is bringing volume if the flows are positive. But now that we've switched into negative, that's why I'm kind of giving some reasoning to Jim Cramer, which I've never thought I would do. But that's why if we just stick to the long term plan of accumulating more Bitcoin and zooming out when in doubt, I think everything should be fine. 
And uh, even if Jim Cramer is right, once every 1,000 years, we'll give it to him. We'll give it to him. And finally, uh, the, the update based on the Coinbase SEC lawsuit is here from James Safehart. And uh, he's he's posted what his friend Elliot, his colleague Elliot in Bloomberg has said. And Elliot is looks like he's predicted some pretty cool stuff uh, very accurately. And he's saying that there's a 70% chance that Coinbase is going to win. If that happens, coin, the altcoins will have a massive, massive rally. Like a huge rally for those of you that don't know what this case is about it's about the um just a couple of months ago we had like 13 tokens that coinbase has and um the sec said that they were basically securities unregistered securities but if the judge says that hold on no we can't rule these things as securities since it's a completely new asset class our traditional systems of measuring what a security is and how it's determined to be a security if those are no longer relevant in this modern world and uh, we need to kind of implement a new Howey test or whatever, then we may see a very interesting turn of events where altcoins suddenly see a huge spike. And some of the altcoins that were included in that list include Matic, Solana, I believe is in there. In the next video, I'll, I'll share it with you and uh, we can maybe diversify some of our portfolio into it uh, if the 70% chance actually ends up being correct. But ladies and gents, that summarizes today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you did, smash up the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, turn on the notification bell. But guys, I'm CryptoKid. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, everyone. And I will see you all in the next video very soon. Take care, guys, and bye-bye.